Hey, Aloha Church Online family. want to say welcome to you, especially if this is your first time tuning in. We're so glad that you're joining us. I believe that God has something powerful that He's going to share with you today. And my name's Chad. I'm honored to be one of the pastors here at C4 Church. And I hope you're doing well in this season. I hope you're staying healthy, staying safe during this pandemic. And can you believe that we're halfway through September already? Is 2020 the year that just won't end, right? And I saw this meme the other day and it just made me laugh, you guys. I want to share it with you right now. Take a look at this. Does anybody remember what movie that's from? Yeah, that's right. That's Mr. Stay Puff, the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. But isn't that meme so true? I mean, what else could go wrong this year? And do you remember that joke at the end of 2019 that every dad and every pastor was telling about about not having 2020 vision? Remember that joke? And I don't think anybody could have imagined, right, as they were telling that joke, what 2020 would hold for us. And I just want to start off today by saying that I'm going to be talking about hope. Be talking about hope. And right off the bat, I want to share with you that this has been one of the hardest messages that I've had to prepare in recent memory. And and the reason is this, that in this current season, church, in, in this current time, more than ever before, I feel personally that hope makes sense for me intellectually, I get it, but not so much emotionally. Like, I don't know about you, but but if I can be real with you for a moment, when I look at all that's going on in our world right now, and, and even what I think is about to lie ahead for us, right? I intellectually know that I should have hope. And I know that we have this anchor of hope in Jesus. And I can quote all of the scriptures. Intellectually, I get it. But emotionally, it almost seems like wishful thinking sometimes. Like, like we're shooting in the dark. And... As I hear about what's happening to my friends and my family who are churched, both church and unchurched, when I think about some of the struggles and the strain that this season is is holding for them, families experiencing tragic loss, others suffering from mental stress and financial struggle and strain, I often feel like, yeah, okay, hope, right? I get it intellectually, but how? And that question's been coming up a lot. And listen, I'm not saying that I don't have hope, okay? So don't send the prayer team Calvary after me. But but I'm just saying that it gets harder and harder in this season. Can any of you relate to me on that? And listen, I I think it's okay. I actually think it's, it's really actually healthy to take an honest look at reality. And in fact, I want to start by asking all of us, today, wherever you are right now, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, let's just take a moment to stop and take some inventory real quick. And listen, you might believe in Jesus today, you might not, but can I ask you this? How's your hope? Let me ask it again. How's your hope? And I get it, that sounds like a funny question, right? You're like, Chad, what do you mean, how's your hope? Well, what I mean is, how hard is it for you to have hope in this current time? Or how hopeful are you compared to to six months ago, back in March? You know, I was recently looking on Instagram, looking back to to when all of this kind of first started for us here in Hawaii. It was was around March, and it was the last time that we gathered in person for church services. Maybe many of you were there with us at that time, and, and I remember we were singing Man, together we were shouting and praising God. And I just remember being in that room and and everything just felt so hopeful. And maybe a little afraid, yeah, but but hopeful. Like we were all so sure that this was going to end within a couple of months tops. Do you remember that? Like God was going to get us out of this thing. And, And how are you doing compared to then? And I'll ask one more time, how's your hope? I think if we're all being honest today, we would say that, that Chad, some days, some days are better than others. It goes up and it goes down. When it comes to hope in this season, we've seen major trials, absolutely. 
But we've also seen God do some incredibly amazing things in this season as well. Isn't that true? And today I just want to say, wherever you are with hope, however you're doing, I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I just want to tell you that that's okay. That's okay. It's a tough season and it can be hard. How's your hope? A better question might be, where is your hope being placed? Or what are you hoping in? Right? When the bottom drops out, as it, as it has for many of us in different ways in this season, when the bottom drops out, what do you grab a hold of first? And how long can that sustain you? Because for many of us, in February, our hope might have been that the virus hadn't reached us yet, that it was way over there. But today, as we stand here in the middle of September, our hope is in the fact that the numbers are going down. The cases, the case count, the death count is, is diminishing. But what happens if it doesn't? And some of you, your hope was in a friendship or maybe a relationship or your marriage. But in this season, you're finding that when that relationship is, is gone or your marriage is on the rocks, man, having hope gets a lot harder, doesn't it? Or maybe for you, it's, it's your finances. And at the start of this year, back in January, it was easy to have hope because maybe you still had your job or you didn't have to dip into your savings or your retirement. But now that the financial stress or struggle has hit, Maybe you got furloughed and hope just seems a lot harder now. And others of us, we put our hope in our health, right? We put our hope in our immune system. Maybe your hope is in, in a vaccine that might be coming. Maybe it's in the government making the right decisions to help protect us or, or end this current lockdown. Your hope is that, man, I'm going to get out of my house and be able to go back to the beach and play with my family. We put our hope in all kinds of things, masks, social distancing. But what happens when those things don't seem to work out? See, I think that part of the problem uh, that you and I struggle with in terms of having hope is that many times maybe we're placing our hope in the wrong thing. And we end up with this false expectation that can't be met. And listen, I get it. Right? I think it's a natural and logical thing to think like this. We're pragmatic people. We see a problem and we want to solve it. And so we begin to place our hope in all these different things, thinking that they're the solution to our problem. But can I tell you today that I think there's a better way? I think that there's a more consistent way to have hope. And here's the point I want you to remember today. If you don't take anything else away from my message, I want you to write this down. Come on, church family, lean in, write this down, that true hope, hope in Jesus, is certain and sure. True hope, hope that's found in Jesus, is certain and sure. And I want you to notice that I said true hope there. And I want to focus us on that true hope today, which is placing our hope in Jesus. Because I don't know about you, but growing up for me, I was taught that hope was like this idea of a light at the end of the tunnel, right? It's, it was based on something that, that I could see and that encouraged me. It gave me hope. Almost like this wishful thinking in a time of trouble. And it provided me with this idea that it would come quickly or it would come very shortly. And I don't know if it's because I grew up in this microwave generation, maybe many of you can relate, right? Where we have everything so fast. We have fast food, we have drive throughs right? The other day I was sitting in the drive through line for eight whole minutes, you guys, eight whole minutes, getting all upset in my car. And I was thinking to myself, this is taking so long. How dare they take eight whole minutes to make me a meal as I sit in my car? And I know that sounds silly, right? But we all think like that. How many yellow lights have you run, right? But somehow we have this idea that hope is supposed to be fast. And today I want to show us that again, true hope, hope that's in Jesus is certain and sure. 
It was never promised to be fast. It was never promised to be slow. In fact, it's not even bound by time. But it is promised to be certain and sure. In fact, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 says that we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and steadfast. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, our forerunner, has entered on our behalf. And the author describes hope as this anchor, this thing that cannot be moved. It's, it's sure. It's certain. And it says that this anchor, this true hope, has a name, and his name is Jesus. Come on, church, type an amen in the chat right now if you believe that. And not only does, does hope have a name in Jesus, but Scripture says that he never changes. He's an anchor. Come on, fishermen. Come on, divers. He's an anchor, but at the same time, he never changes. In fact, Hebrews 13, 8 says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. How certain and how sure is that? He never changes. True hope, hope in Jesus, is certain and sure. And today, to help me show this, I want to take a look at a group of people in the Bible who were in a situation similar to you and I today. They really didn't have any reason to be hopeful based on what was happening around them. And what's interesting is that their definition of hope was greatly different from how you and I might define hope ourselves today. So if you would, open up your Bibles with me, or you can just look on your phone on the Bible app. Open it up to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. And I want to look at one of the most quoted verses in all of Scripture. Listen, this verse gives John 3.16 a run for its money, man. It's like one of those verses, like Philippians 4.13 is another one, where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know those verses, right? If you've ever seen a Christian shirt, Christian hat, Bible, bumper sticker, you've probably seen this verse, and it's Jeremiah 29, 11. I used to have a, a teammate of mine when I was playing sports. They used to write Jeremiah 29, 11 on their shoes before the game, right? And this is what it says. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope and a hope. And we know that verse, right? You were probably saying it with me as I was reading it. Jeremiah 29, 11. It's motivational. It's inspirational. And it feels good. And it gives us hope. But the thing that I think most of us miss is that if we were to zoom out a little, right? And look at that verse in its context. It might give us a different perspective. And so let's start reading today at the verse right before it at Jeremiah 29 verse 10. And Jeremiah 29 10 says this, For thus says the Lord, When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill my promise to bring you back to this place. And here's verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In verse 12, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. See, we like to talk about the plans for a future and a hope that God had for Israel here. But we often miss that in this passage, he told them that it would take 70 years of struggle, 70 years of strain to get there. 
Think about that. Some people don't even live 70 years, yet God said that the plans would come after the 70 years were over. The good was going to come after some groaning. You know what I'm talking about? The prosperity was going to come after some perils. And that's what they placed their hope in, that if God said it, it was going to happen. We think we've had a rough nine months with struggling through COVID-19 and all the things, the pandemic and the changes, right? They were struggling for 70 years. And it brings me back to my main point today that true hope, hope in Jesus is certain and sure. It doesn't matter how long it takes. doesn't matter how short it takes. doesn't matter what's happening around us. True hope, hope in Jesus is certain and sure. And it's interesting that, that the word for hope, the word for hope that's used in Jeremiah 29, 11, is this Hebrew word. It's actually used many times in the Old Testament. It's the Hebrew word, kava, kava. Wherever you are right now, turn to somebody next to you. Talk to yourself if you have to. Say kava, kava. Yeah, not kava, okay? To all my Samoan friends, shout out to you, but we're not talking about kava. We're talking about kava, kava. It's the Hebrew word for hope, but watch this. It also means to wait. It also means to wait. It's a hope that we have to wait for. It's this, it's this waiting with anticipation of God doing something even though we can't see it right now. Even though it might be tough for us, we're waiting with this anticipation, with this hope that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That He's an anchor. That it's sure and that it's certain. And the good news, family, the good news is that when we wait on God, right? When we put our hope in Him, when we kava, we are placing our hope in something that will not fail us. It's not like the roller coasters that I talked about earlier, right? That come and that go, that go up and that go down. Remember, hope in Jesus is not fast, it's not slow, in our eyes, right? But I want to encourage you that it is always certain and sure. Always. And so the question becomes, how do we live that out? How do we live that out? In this time where things aren't getting much better, right? I think you would agree with me on that. In fact, many times we look around, it looks like it's getting worse. What do we do? How do we kava? How do we learn to hope as we wait? And one thing, okay, one thing I want you to try out with me this week. This is how we do it. This is how we find our hope in Jesus is right here. Make hope a habit. Make hope a habit. And what do I mean by that? This is what I want you to do this week. Remembering again, family, that God said His plans were good he never said that his plans were instant, right? In the meantime, until they come to pass, until those good and perfect plans come to pass, you and I need to make a habit, right, of looking for the ways, looking for all the different ways that he is actually moving currently, right now. Remember, yesterday, today, and forever. How's he moving right now? We need to be looking for those ways. And here's the cool part, right? That scripture tells us that this true hope in Jesus is certain and sure, not just long time from now, not just long ago in the Bible, right? But today in the present as well. In fact, 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a what? Living hope. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. True hope is living today in the midst of the virus, in the midst of whatever the struggle is that you're walking through right now. But we got to make hope a habit. We have to look and we have to see we need to kava. 
as we wait, we need to make hope a habit by seeing the different ways that God's moving right now among us. And that family, that will become like this wood, like wood into this continuous, consistent fire of our hope in Jesus. And you know, I like to think of making hope a habit practically like the punch buggy game. How many of you played the punch buggy game? Remember that? Yeah. And what would happen when you played that game, right? Your friend, you'd be driving, just cruising, relaxing, and your friend would bang, punch you all of a sudden. And what happened next? 99% of the time, immediately what would happen, you would start to look like never before. You would look for a VW Beetle car, right? Because you wanted to punch your friend back. Sometimes you wanted to punch him in the face. And so all of our focus, all of your focus in that moment went to searching, went to finding that uh, that VW Beetle. And that's kava. That's making hope a habit. It's looking, actively searching and and fighting to find these ways that God is moving, that He's doing things among us right now in this season, despite what's going on around you. And that's what it means to make hope a habit, that while we wait, while we seek, and while we search, we're going to see God moving. And a couple practical ways to do this this week is right here. Number one, this is an easy one. Just snap a photo. Right when you see something that gives you hope, right when you see a moment where God is doing something, I want you to take a photo right then and there. Right When you see a glimmer of hope, just a tiny speck of how God might be doing something, I want you to take a photo of it. No matter how big or small, no matter where it is, no matter when it is, I want you to capture it on your phone. Take a picture of it. And then from there, show it to somebody. Show it to a friend. Show it to your husband, your wife. Share it on Instagram. I don't care what you do, but share it with somebody after you capture it this week. And after seven days of doing that, watch, family. Watch how hope becomes a habit. We're going to start to see God actively doing things in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of your trials, right? And I get it, maybe photos aren't your thing, right? You say, Chad, I'm not a big photo taker. All right, well, maybe you're more of a writer. And I want to encourage you to start a hope journal. Remember, hope is certain and sure. And so this journal is not a wish list to Santa Claus, all right? This looks like you, at the end of your day, just sitting down and spending time with Jesus, reflecting and writing down all of the certain and sure ways that you saw God doing things around you that day. And after a week of that, right? After a month of that, watch how hope becomes a habit in your life. And my dream, my dream for you and for me is that if I talk to you a week, if I talk to you a month or even six months from now, and I ask you the same question I asked you at the start today, I say, hey, how's your hope? My dream is that you would honestly tell me, Chad, it has its ups and downs, but but it's better than it was before. Finding hope has actually become a habit for me. And I might not see exactly what God is doing through this, but I know He's doing something, and here's how I know that. And imagine with me, family, imagine if we all started doing that. Imagine that it started with you and then it just blossomed into your marriage, right? Into your family or maybe into your circle group. And then from there, it starts to go into your workplace. It starts to to be amongst your friends and and the people around you. And, And we're all, we're all, they're all dying, by the way. They're all struggling. But all of a sudden, they start to look at you and they start to look at me, at us as the church, as believers in Jesus. And they say, you know what? Those guys aren't preaching this rah-rah, fake, everything is a mess, but it's okay because hope. They're not talking that. But I don't know, something about how consistent their hope is, something about how real it is, is almost like a habit for them. And I want that. 
And imagine with me, family, when that becomes the way that Jesus shines his light into the dark world around us. Man, I'm believing that it could happen. I'm believing it could happen for me. I believe it could happen for you and for everyone around us. But listen, it starts with us making hope a habit and understanding that true hope, our hope that's placed in Jesus is certain and is sure. And listen, family, before we pray today, I realize that there might be two different groups of people that I want to pray with and pray for. And, and, and the first group, maybe you've heard this message and you're, you're wondering, man, I want to place my hope in Jesus. I want to place my hope in something that's certain and that's sure, but I've never done that before and I don't really know how. And can I tell you today that it all starts with a prayer. It just, it's just praying and, and asking Him to come be that sure and certain foundation inside of your life. And so we're going to do that. And there's probably a second group of people today as well that, man, maybe Jesus is already a part of your life. And I think that's awesome, right? But maybe He needs to be a bigger part of your life. Maybe your hope used to be fully anchored in Jesus. But in this season, like I said earlier, it's easy for our hope to become placed in, in all these different things. And, and maybe for you today, it's placing your hope fully back into the one who calls himself the anchor of our hope. And so I want to pray with us. Would you pray with me, family? For those of you that are praying again, I want to make Jesus the hope of my life. God, we're coming before you today and we're coming in Jesus' name, believing that he is certain and sure. He's our foundation. He's our hope. He's our anchor. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we want to place our hope today in that. I want to confess that I've placed my hope in all of these different things, God. And today, I want to bring my hope back into a place where it's fully in you. And so, Jesus, would you, would you reassure me when, when things get hard, when finances don't look so good, when loss becomes part of my life, right? Would you reassure me that you are certain and that you are sure that you have plans for my life? They're good. They're for my, for my good. Not to harm me, not to forsake me. But God, I need a reminder of that. And so would you remind not only me, God, but all of those that are watching this message right now, remind them that you are our certain and sure hope. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said a great big amen. Amen.